So you're going up the stairs at night. You're just tired from a long, long day. You lay down on your bed. As soon as your head hits the pillow, you're just asleep. You're peacefully dreaming, and all of a sudden, a ghostly figure just ripped the sheets out of you. You're startled. You wake up. You look everywhere. You don't see anything at all. Your heart is pounding. Your mind is going everywhere. These are some of the stories we'll be covering today from a haunted lighthouse to a town said to be so cursed people don't dare to go, a creature, a mythical creature that is roaming the woods, and a demonic doll that want to possess your soul. These are the first over legends from Connecticut. I'm Yvonne. And I'm Carlos. And this is Yvonne Plus One. Welcome back. River legend is going to take us all the way into the New London Ledge Lighthouse near New London Harbor. It was built in 1909 and it's in the middle of the ocean. So what they did is they did an underwater concrete base and then a slab basically in the house on top of it. And it's like a red brick and white house with the light on top of it. So basically like an oil, oil rig, right? It, exactly. Mm. And it's in the middle of the name of the name, of the uh, of the ocean. So if you were going to work there, uh, it would usually have four people, crew members, and you will have a 18 months period where you had to live there. So you will be living in the house and doing your duties and sleeping in there, eating in there, doing anything, having fun in there, everything you will have to do it in there. I feel like the isolation alone will be enough because there's nothing but the four of you and hopefully you guys get along well because as it is, it's very hard, you know? But they can, uh, can they take vacations or, well, because uh, I mean, 18 months, 18 months is 18 months is a two, lot. Over a year. A year, yeah. Year so it says every, it says every couple of weeks, it doesn't say how many a couple of weeks are, they will take six days off and go uh, off. They rotate or something? I'm assuming so, because there must be somebody, somebody always in duty keeping the light running. And the whole purpose of that, of lighthouses in general, I, I don't, I've never like worked in one, is mm -hmm. basically the whole purpose is just turn it on when there's fog. I mean, literally people are living there well, just to turn on a lighthouse when it's foggy or is there some other thing going on? No, no, they turn the lights on, especially at night, so the, the chips So you literally have what, four people living there paid to turn on a light. Yeah. Well, or and I think something? back then, because it, it, it was built in 1909, uh, I am assuming you had to, it's like, I don't know if it was gas or how the lights was uh, on. Some it wasn't, yeah, you had to maintain it. Uh -huh. Yeah. That makes sense. So basically, you were stuck in that 52 by 52 uh, feet house. Foot. Foot place, yeah. So. Hmm. Things, weird things were happening when you were living in there, like. Imagine you're just trying to sleep and somebody else take the covers off you in the middle of the night and you wake up and there's nobody there. Or you are assigned to clean the deck and you go there and it's already clean and then find out that none of you did it. So these kind of little things kept happening and they think it was all done by a ghost named Ernie. So Ernie is said to be a former last housekeeper and he one day found out that his wife was leaving him for another man and he was devastated. He just went all the way up uh, and jump and kill himself. Another version said that he went all the way up and cut his throat and he fell. Either way, he died and now he's stuck in there and he's hunting, hunting this lighthouse. Like uh, um, other things they Ernie is known to do is like turning the TV on and off or the lights on and off or sounding the horn on when nobody is turning it on. So that must be, I can even, I can picture like you're trying to do your job or you're relaxing, I don't know what you're doing and all of a sudden it goes off, not expecting it because none of you did it. That would be, make me jump, mm. wouldn't it? Yeah. That would be very freaky. And is it foggy when he does it? Is it like an intelligence? 
he doesn't say. Because if it's just like random, like a really and, sun, sunny day, or is it day. like sun, does he know that it's it's like sunny? Maybe he's doing his duty foggy. beyond his uh, life, like he's dead and he's still trying to make sure that everything is running fine. Mm, maybe, testing. Mm -hmm. maybe it's a possibility. So other things that Ernie is known to do is um, moving cups and stuff like that. So imagine you're drinking your coffee and all of a sudden it moves. Mm -hmm. That will be creepy. Or you, he's known to knock on doors or you can hear him making sounds or like if somebody's walking but there's nobody there. So all of these things are said that Ernie does it. And so... Around 1981, a medium came to the lighthouse, and she identified Ernie as John Randolph. And she's the one who said he was a former last la house light keeper, but there's no records of him existing at all. However, they only kept records in, uh, from the point that the Coast Guard took over taking care of the lighthouse. Before, it was like, regular people who will take care of the of the lighthouse. So maybe he was one of them before the Coast Guard, but there's not official record that there was never a John Randolph as a house a lie, lie housekeeper. Something just occurred to me as no no relation to this, but what if there is like multiple timelines and some of those timelines can cross where there's like a different version where that guy actually stayed there. Huh. I guess I've been watching too many of the <laughs> Avengers and uh, That's Marvel interesting, movies. yeah. Because, like, a maybe he's multiverse. stuck. I just thought of that in general for Ghost and for these kind of weird, mm -hmm. where you're like, there's no record of something, but then a medium comes in. I mean, the medium and she's could reading be, the more the logical more... probably reality is of medium just making it up. Like, <laughs> she's not a real. But, but, but no, yeah. but you know what is fascinating is that, and I don't know if this other, because there's been more than one media that have gone to the house. And they all said the same thing? Because that and would be some weird. of them, they, they have say uh, John, John as the first name, and some of them have say the second name, I cannot say for sure, but it starts with an R, which she said Randall. So, so oh, so there's been confirmation it's from been, different. From, yeah. Unless they're all friends. Exactly. Unless they already knew the story and they're just going yeah. along with it. Yeah. <laughs> So some people have said that from afar, like in the if they're in a boat or the mainland, they have seen uh, bearded men in a slicker and rain hat. Or they have seen the lights turning on and off in the lighthouse when it's not supposed to. Or they have seen like a ghostly uh, man looking through uh, through the window. Who who's seen this? Like people from afar. Like oh, so when they're on a boat. Yeah, like, like in the boat or something like that. Now, this light was automated in 1987, meaning that there was no need for anybody to be living there to make the light run. So one of the last keepers left a note in the log that says, and I read, I quote, Rock of slow torture, earnings domain, hell on earth, may new London lash light shine on forever because I'm through. I will watch it from afar while I drink a brew. Wow. Isn't that crazy that it's like a... a Parting a, words. Yeah. See you later, so, Ernie. See, I wouldn't want to be uh, kind of... It must be... <laughs> I feel like they must have gone through heck living in there and having all this crazy experience. Yeah. And like I said, you're stuck in there. You cannot leave. Mm. Uh, it's crazy to me. So today... Um, if you want to see this lighthouse, you can actually take a tour. It's usually they have like a little museum in the mainland and they talk to you. I don't know if they show you a video or what. And eventually they will take you in a boat and you can go and look at inside. And I warn you, though, uh, Ernie, it has been known to untie the boats and let them drift, letting them drift. So you might get stuck there. At least until he's lonely. Coming. He wants he's to lonely. keep you there. He wants somebody to come <laughs> and, and stay with them, but he's known to have done that. The next um, urban legend that we're going to talk about is going to take us to a forbidden forest in the depth of New Northern Western Connecticut to a town the locals dare not to speak, the ruins of Dudley Town. Now, it is said that this town is cursed and is inhabited by ghosts and demons. 
The story goes all the way back to the 1500s. It is said that uh, Edmund Dooley wanted to over, uh, overturn the King of England, King Henry VIII. However, his plans failed. They figured it out. He was trying to do that, and they caught him, and they killed him. They executed him. When he, Edmund was killed, a uh, curse was pu- put on the family. So they said that they by were the going to— I'm assuming by the king or, or somebody surrounding, or somebody him. surrounding him that they're going to suffer hers and death in this family. Then John Dooley, who was the son, he, like I say, he probably was mad of what happened to his dad or he just wanted to have power. But he said that he wanted to take control over, over the Br- British throne. So what he did is he arranged a marriage between his son Guilford and Lady Jane Grey. So soon after she became the queen and... The queen of England. Yes. And... Uh, they found out about the plans, and they end up killing her, and killing John and Will. Uh, the Queen Yelford, of England. They killed her. Uh, Dooley. It was uh, interesting. She only was queen for nine days. This is not part of the legend, but I looked her up because I didn't know if it was a real. It, it's it's a complicated story, but but she did actually be uh, te- technically was the queen for nine days. We should look up that whole so, thing as a legend in and of itself, like its own she, story. She is known as the Nine Days Queen, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Now, the story, this this story of this legend is a little iffy because mm-hmm. if you actually read the story about all these people, do they actually exist? A lot of these things did happen, but they're adding but stuff, removing exactly. stuff. It's not exactly as the historians say. It's not. There's no curse that I know of or anything, but the legend said there's a curse. And so she died and... The Queen of England died with her husband. With her husband, which was... Who was the guy that was trying to take over, so maybe she was in on it. Well, we don't know if she was in on it, but... She was accused of being in on it. She was accused. Mm -hmm. Then another son of John Dooley, he was a military officer. He was coming from France, and he didn't know he was sick. And when he came, he brought a plague with him. Then he spread it around other uh, military officers and eventually to the town, killing thousands of people. Then there's the third son. He had more sons than that, but there's another son named Robert Dooley, First Earl of Lesier, because they all have like this formal fancy, fancy names. Obviously, if they're going to marry the king, the yeah. queen. Yeah, or they work for them, they and they have all this loyalty, uh, royalty names. So he decided to leave England and c- come to the New World, and he ended up in Connecticut. So for many years, everything was fine. He had kids, and I think he died peacefully. But eventually, somewhere around the 1700s, there were three brothers who bought land and formed what is known as the Dudley Town. But a lot of horrible things started happening in this town, and they think that they br- brought the curse to the town. Mm. So this town was very small. They only have about 26 family, and one of them was uh, the, fam- the Carter family in 1759. They just moved in. They were ready to like grow their farm, grow their family. But suddenly six members of the family died from uh, a disease and they were devastated. So they just picked everything up and left. They moved to New York. And unknowing to them, they have moved to an Indian territory and they were attacked and the dad, the mom, and the baby were killed. And the other three kids were taken. And the two daughters were ransomed in Canada and the son was kept captive. Uh, in the Indian reservation. And eventually it says that he's married, but they think that the curse followed them and that's why they die. I'm curious of a couple of things. Uh-huh. First, um, who's, somebody needs to be telling these stories. Like there needs to be somebody that lived throughout all those different eras to pass it down the information. Yeah, I don't like know who that is. Because <laughs> like, you know, like, the, like a grandpa that says, yeah, when we were back then, they put a curse on us. Like, and they, he couldn't have died because then he had to, like, put it together that, mm-hmm. yeah, we're still in the curse or, or something like that. Yeah, I wouldn't know who that person is. But I, I see what you mean. Yeah, it makes sense. Somebody needs to, like, 
Oh, maybe How, they just found like a unless a there's log actually books. Or something. Yeah, somebody yeah. needs to log this somehow. And the second question mm -hmm. I have is: these people were navigating the waters coming from England, and they accidentally fell into an Indian. They accidentally landed on an Indian reservation. Off the no, coast, no, no. or how does that work? This was a random family that settled in Dooley Town. That they were already here. They don't. They didn't came from England. No, but you said that they were. They accidentally went into an Indian reservation. This was this family, the uh, Carter family. They were just traveling, or what? Do we know how they ended up in the Indian reservation? They just moved to New York and tried to settle something, and they settled there. So they settled into an Indian reservation without knowing. Yeah. So put in their territory or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. It wasn't like they landed in a place, because right? that's kind of what I was understanding that when you're telling the story. No. They so they landed. first moved to the Durley town, and then the family members died, and they, they were devastated, and they moved to New York, because it it's close by, it's going yeah. mm -hmm. to New York. And they tried to settle in there, but they didn't know that they landed the certain in certain areas exactly. that you're not supposed to be in, because they weren't. Because they were They were part still of in, in battling. A yeah. Little bit. Okay. And this was the 1700s. Mm-hmm. So then there's an, uh, another um, person who lived in the Dudley town named Gershon Hollister. And in 1792, he was just helping a neighbor either a build a farm, a barn, sorry, or repair it. We don't know if exactly, but they were working on a barn and he had a horrible accident and he died. Okay. Who is this? His name is Herson, Herson, or Herson Hollister. Okay. Then there's another member of uh, of another uh, neighbor there. His name was Tanner. And he, he was very old, but he kept saying that he kept seeing these dark figures coming out of the woods in the night. And he was completely terrified and he was scared, but nobody would believe him. And eventually he went insane and he died. Now, mind you, he was 104 year old when he died. So who Dementia knows? Dementia exactly. It's hard later. <laughs> Exactly. Sorry. Uh, then uh, we have Aviel Dudley, who is said to be one of the founders of the town. He also started seeing the dark creatures coming from the woods at night. And he will tell people there's something at night that is coming out of the woods. It's scary and it's scaring me. But as the other one, nobody believed him. And eventually he lost his mind and he died too. Okay. Maybe something in the water. Maybe something Maybe in the not. water. No. Then around 1804, General Herman Swift, um, he was living in Dooley Town. He was with his wife. His wife was in the front porch in a rainy night, and it was thundering and lightning, and all of a sudden uh, she was struck by a lightning, and she instantly died. And he was so devastated that he also lost his mind and died shortly after she did. So they believe that all these little things are due to the curse. Then around uh, the Civil War time, most residents have left. This town was becoming less and less populated, but there were a few. And one of them was John Brophy. And unfortunately, his wife died of consumption, which I found out basically she was sick, most likely with tuberculosis, and she died. He, They had two little kids, and so they had a funeral, and... They were very sad, and suddenly the two little kids got lost in the woods, and they never found them. So horrible things keep happening to him. To add it up, his life, his house uh, burned down. So he had no wife, no kids, no house, and he just one day went to the woods and disappeared himself, and he was never found. That's a very sad, like, he lost everything. So by the 1900, pretty much the, the Dooley town was completely deserted. The house were going into ruins. Uh, the, the trees were taking over. And everybody thought that the curse was going to be done with it because the town was done. But Dr. William Clark and his wife Harriet, they were looking for a vacation, a place to build a vacation home. They originally for, were from New York. And they came to Connecticut. And they found this beautiful forest. And they bought a thousand acres, and in between those acres included the Dudley Town. Okay. So somebody got rid of it. Somebody got somebody it. sold he, it. He bought it unknowingly. <laughs> 
So they bought, uh, they build their, their house and they spend their summers and holidays and Thanksgiving and they were they were doing great. And one time in 1918, uh, they were vacationing in the house and Dr. Clark got a call from New York that he needed to, to go back for an emergency. So he left and she stayed there by herself. But he returned within 36 hours. But when he returned, he found his wife completely insane. She was basically kind of like hysterical and she kept saying the dark creatures came from the woods and attacked her and she just lost her mind. Eventually they went back to New York and she killed herself, which is very sad. So Dr. Clara eventually got remarried and they kept going to the same home for vacationing until 1930 where they build a bigger house and they stopped going to that one in particular. But it said that he liked so much the forest that he wanted to preserve her. So he got together with other doctors and friends and formed what is known as the Dark Entry Forest Association. Dark? The Dark mm-hmm. Entry Forest Association. It kind of a spooky name, just knowing the history and people believing that it's cursed. Did he do that cursed. on purpose? That was a weird name. I don't know, but it does also say because it's kind of in a valley, so it's it gets, it's kind of dark. Yeah. So today is is it's a private property, so you cannot go. So it's forbidden to go. Uh, however, That's the house not, there's nothing there. There's no houses or anything. There's uh, there's some of the ru- ruins, ruins of the house, but there's no like a main house. No. But that's, that hasn't stopped uh, people, people. <laughs> like um, ghost hunters or urban explorers to kind of go and see it. And when they have gone in there to explore the ruins, they have said that they have felt cold spots or like they've been washed or like a dark present or seen dark figures from the corner of their eyes. They say they have been touched, slapped and even pushed. And some of them have said that they have captured dark figures in their pictures. So in 1970s, uh, a paranormal couple named Ed and Lorraine Warren, they were given permission to uh, go to this area, and they declared the area to be demonically possessed. So maybe maybe this town is actually cursed. Wow. This whole story kind of reminds me a little bit. I mean, I would say it, it almost it feels like it inspired this uh, show on Netflix that we watched. I don't know if you recall, Lock and Key. Because I feel mm-hmm. like it has a lot of elements where people disappear, people die for no reason. There's the history, like, in the, you know, from the soldiers. It has a lot of the elements, I feel like. I'm not saying that it's like the story is based on that. Like it's not no, trying to be a documentary. it's not exactly the same, but, but it it's is like in, inspired like that. in that. And even the description of the houses. I don't remember. I think that was in Massachusetts. I don't remember what the, what the setting of the lock, the lock home was. But I don't there's, this, there's also a home there that's all creepy and there's all weird stuff happening. So yeah, so I this think is... If you want to see something that's kind of... Um, if Sounds you like this. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I mean, it's kind of, I would say it's inspired by it almost because just based on this, the the idea. Mm. Yeah. So wh- how would you rate this from one to five? That's definitely a five just because it has, I think it has enough material to create a miniseries, uh, at, at least a movie, at least a movie that can cover a bunch of this stuff. Maybe not two hours is not enough. That's why I say miniseries because there's a lot of stuff. It's It's... it's I mean, it's, it's like all the way back stuff. to the 1500s. Exactly. You go to the Q, the queen, then you go to like early sell, settlers, and then you go to this ghost hunter people, uh, whatever. The paranormal the, couple. The paranormal couple. Well, that's in the 70s, which is not that far away. It's like from these now. are all different kind of styles of movies you can make. It's yeah. interesting. Well. So that's a good one. It is a good one. I don't know if I would try to go to the forest, but like, I, I don't know. If, I'm let's say even if it wasn't trespassing, I wouldn't do it. I, it's just too much, too much evidence. I believe it. I would go say. with a group, not by myself. Why though? I do yeah. love seeing ruins. Like I'm always intrigued. I always wanted to go to like an abandoned, uh, like mall or an abandoned mm. mus- uh, amusement no. park. I find no, that fascinating. Creepy. It's creepy. And I probably wouldn't do it by myself because I will be too creepy. But with a group of people, maybe. Mm. Yeah. Our next uh, urban legend is going to take us all the way to Glastonbury, Connecticut. Uh, when in a beautiful day in January 1939, 
rumors started going around about something mysterious happening, all of a sudden the farm animals were found slaughtered, and even some pets were hurt or killed. And people didn't know what, what was happening, and as the days went back, all of a sudden they started seeing these creatures in the woods. And people will describe it at the beginning like, oh, it's a combination of a, between a cat and a dog, but much bigger. And as they saw it more and more, they will describe it as looking like a bear, a, mix, a mixture of a bear and a panther and a lion. lion. It was definitely big. They say it was about a four feet in length and about two to two and a half in high. And it had a long tail. Some say it was bushy and it, it, the color varied between brown or black. This creature is said that at night it will make these uh, blood curling screeches and everybody will freak out hearing them at night. And it kind of sounded like the cackle, cackle of a hygiene. Mm -hmm. That's how they describe it. So the, the presence of this animal was reported everywhere in the news. And eventually a person named Frank King, the, who was the editor of Hair for Current, he named this creature the Glawokus, and people loved it. From then that day on, the creature was called Glawokus. How did he come up with that name? So he came up with this name. It was a combination of the town's name, which is Glastonbury, with the word Waki, <laughs> and an, a, a Latin noun, N, as us, because they wanted to make the name like scientific sounding. Oh, so God. that's how they name it. They actually wrote that somewhere, like they yes, did like they this is did. How I we think did that it. was part of the article so of the like, of the newspaper yeah, that he wrote. And he I'm so clear. good. Let me. <laughs> this is how I came up with it. Like something. Like he's so like showing off, you know. Like come on. Mm. So, so like I say, he was totally uh, sensation. It was everywhere in the news. They will make maps, like pointing everywhere they have seen it. They would even make ads with the name of this creature like uh this was one of them be ready for a quick getaway from the glastonbury glaucus by using laruel oil ester gasoline and new atlas battery so be yeah. ready be ready to escape <laughs> and another hair salon of uh, they were offering permanence and they say don't look like a, a glaucus <laughs> oh my god so people were going with it, and they loved it. They were uh, they they like and embrace what was happening. Did it ever attack people? No, it was just animals and pets. Mm. To me, that's just like I would just lean on or suggest that it's probably just a mountain lion. It could be. That's kind of what it sounds like. It's just like if you if you never get a good look at it, you it could be anything. But, but it went crazy because everybody was giving such a wild description of how this creature looked. Yeah, because at night, if you see something in shadows or something, then you might, you know, add stuff to it. So people had enough. They they form a hunting party and they look everywhere. They even look in caves. And some people have a glimpse of him, but he was never actually caught. Mm -hmm. And they at some point even found tracks, but it led to nothing. So eventually, after weeks of looking and looking, people started forgetting about it and they forgot. They stopped caring about the Glawakas. Okay. Somewhere around the 1950s, somebody claimed to have seen it, but just as he claimed that, it just came and went, and that was about it. Nobody else heard from them. However, the legend still told uh, about this creature. Now, there's some theories of who this creature might be, one being a fisher cat, which I didn't know what it was, but a fisher has, a cat has a pointed face with large uh, ears and a slender body, short legs, and a furry tail. So it's kind of a little bit of what they describe, but what people describe the Glawakus was wilder because it almost was like the head of a lion and it was a very combination of, of all the animals they have claimed to see. Mm. All the ones said that maybe it was a mountain lion, and but the reality is that. Nobody know what the creature is or if it still exists. Some people believe that if you look the creature into the eyes, it will erase your memories. So he will Harry Potter you and obliviate you. Wow. So, so why you just close your eyes while he eats you? You go like he he's eats looking your pets. for him. <laughs> he's not going to eat you, but he's going to eat your pets. You just close your eyes and you're fine. Yeah. It kind of really does remind me to Harry Potter when... Uh, 
uh, the chamber of secrets that you couldn't see the creature into oh. the eye, but it's a it's a the big the three headed of, lion. No, it wasn't no, the three headed. It was lion. the serpent that if the serpent oh, looking yeah. into your eyes, it will kill you. But this one, it will be, obliviate you and okay. erase your memories. How you rate this uh, this legend? I would say a three at the most because uh, it's just a mountain lion in my opinion. Like people add the stuff. I would imagine that just that writer, just because he was so proud of his naming, he could just add like new new things to it, like yeah. you know, like it went just crazy. It was like a how do you say a fever? He can sensationalize it's, it. It's sensational. And that's how you become popular as a writer in general, right? Like, oh, let me write another article, more information. Now there's ads, like it, it's an economy thing. Yeah, and then yeah. like you say, eventually they forget about it because that was it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that probably stopped a lot of people from going from like going to that area it's mm -hmm. not scary so that's At why i rate, not it. Scary I rate it pretty low okay 2.5 to 3 in the, in the middle of that <laughs> our ne uh, next urban legend uh will take us all the way to monroe connecticut where on a beautiful day in 1970s uh student nurse it was her 28th birthday and her mom just gave her a uh, raggedy and doll for her birthday and she mm. was very happy with it uh, the doll had red yarn for hair. It had a, a white blouse with little blue flowers and sleeves. And it has like white, I don't know if they're pants or like a, a skirt. And they had striped socks and black shoes. And her face was painted with round eyes, a triangular nose, and a smile. It was actually cute for a doll. Uh, not that I like it, but it was cute. And so the student nurse, she took it to her apartment. She was very happy, and she put it in her bed, and she started noticing little things like the doll being in different places. Like she put it in the bed, and all of a sudden it was in the chair or in her desk, and eventually it will even be in different parts of the apartment. So she asked her roommate, hey, have you been moving my doll? And she was like, no, I have not. So little things like that happened. Then all of a sudden, they started finding little notes uh, wrote in parchment paper, which they didn't own any parchment paper. And the notes will say things like, help me or help us. And they were kind of getting freaked out about the situation. It was more and more spooky. Eventually, they found the doll one day with some red marks in his hand, in her hands. And they thought that it looked kind of like blood. So they had enough and they contacted a medium. So the medium came, they'd sit down and have a sign, which uh, I don't know, I, I, don't, I wouldn't do one. They sat in a circle, they tried to contact the spirits. And when they contact the spirits, um, the medium say the doll actually did have a spirit inside her and it was the spirit of a little girl named Annabelle Higgins. And this little girl used to live in that apartment and unfortunately, she died when she was around seven years old. She said that the spirit said that she was lonely, but she uh, really felt loved by the two nurses. So the two nurses felt sorry for her and they let her stay in the house. And for a while, everything was fine. But eventually, more and more creepy things started happening, just like any horror movie, <laughs> right? So they were like freaked out. And eventually, one friend of them, a male friend, he was in the house. Some, some say that he was sleeping, some say that he was just there, and he heard a noise coming from out of one of the rooms, and he went to check it out. And when he opened the door, the only thing that he found was the doll. He has always hated that doll. He always said that that doll was evil, and when he opened it, it was just it. And he felt like a strange sensation, like like there was something dangerous in there and all of a sudden he got this pain in his chest and deep scratches appear on his chest. They say they were deep enough that he started bleeding like through his shirt. But as deep of a, as deep as it was, it kind of went away in a couple of days. But the girls had enough. They say, no, this we don't like that. So they went to the priest, and then the priest contacted the same paranormal couple that we heard in the lighthouse, Ed and Lorraine Warren. They were very famous. They have worked thousands of cases. So they came to the house and assessed the situation, and they say, you know, this doll 
does not have the, the spirit of a little girl. This doll is actually possessed by a demonic spirit. And the spirit is trying to take one of the girls, like possess one of the girls. Mm. So they were all uh, freaked out. So they decided, the warrants decided that they needed to take the doll away from the house. The priest uh, did an exorcism and the warrants took her. And it says that when they were driving to take them uh, from, to go to their house, all these car problems were um, happening, like the car was stalling, the, the brakes were failing. So Ed Warren grabbed a bunch of uh, holy water and splashed the doll and though that calmed the situation down enough for them to be able to, to get to their house. Mm. Why, why were they in a rush to get to their house? Because they felt like that doll, that doll was very angry and they were going to cause problems. Yeah, but what are they going to do with the doll? Oh, that's what I'm going to tell you right oh, now. Oh, okay. So the Warrens have a museum called the Warrens Occult Museum where they keep anything, any object that they say have been defiled by evil entities or they have been possessed or they've been touched by an evil entity. So they have all these crazy pieces of anything because you can see from skull they're to collectors of they this. collector of all these uh, things that's supposed to be demonic basically. that reminds me a little of that one show warehouse 13 do you remember where they had all these weird objects that they tried to like confine so they wouldn't like hurt humanity or something it was something like that but with only creepy objects because mm. it almost things looked they... like a halloween scary house oh wow so they had this museum, so they brought the doll in there and they put the doll in a glass box and they did a bunch of ritualistic prayers and a priest came and blessed the museum and blessed the house to trying to keep that de devil, demonic entity inside that box. Mm. Now, this is pretty much the story of the legend, right? This paranormal case by the Warren inspired a bunch of movies. Um, they inspired a movie called Annabelle that was released in 2014. And then Annabelle Creation uh, released in 2017. And Annabelle Comes Home in 2019. Which is, these three movies are part of a bigger set of movies called The Conjuring Universe. Mm. Which are all horror movies. But what and about all, Chucky? Is Chucky no the cousin? Is, it, is he the cousin of the <laughs> Maybe. The doll? But and it's not part of this one. The Conjuring is all based in different cases the Warrens uh, mm. did. But some of them are very, very scary. Now, the Warrens uh, Occult Museum was permanently closed because it was basically, some say it was in the basement of the house or in the back of the house, but it was in a residential zone and it, they didn't have permits to have that. So it's, it's closed. Mm. However, if you want to see Annabelle, the demonic doll in person there's gonna be um a convention named the warren's seekers of the supernatural phantasmacon uh on mohegan sun resort and casino on october 28 2023 so you can buy tickets and experience like that yourself four days from now or something right whatever day it is today. well the day we're recording at least <laughs> but it is it's, uh, be... it's very soon it's going to be yeah, in the spooky like month of Halloween. Days, one, 20 days from the publishing of this video. Pretty much. Okay. And uh, so you can go and see it. And they're going to have more artifacts from the uh, Warren's Museum, but she's going to be included there. Wow. How'd you rate this one? I mean, it's a really good one. It has all kinds of stuff. You can also make movies. Well, they did make a movie. They did make several They movies. did make a movie. It yeah, so I forgot movie. about that, but um, I haven't watched. I don't remember anything like from my childhood. Annabelle, I do remember. Well, Chucky. this is not ch your childhood. This was 2014, 17, and oh, wow, 19. Oh, that's why. That's why, because it's it was in my childhood that mm -hmm. I actually worried or thought about those movies. I don't really watch that scary many, movies. Uh, scary movies or just movies in general lately. So, but and and the uh, Annabelle, like the Annabelle doll of the story, is. Like I say, it's a very cute doll, and if you see it like in a regular store, you think it's cute. But the Annabelle from the movies, she's creepy. Like oh, I wouldn't have, if I saw that doll, I wouldn't have bought it or have it in my house because she, she's not nice looking. So I'll rate it a five just because, I mean, there's movies about it. Come on, like that has to be I scary to be, enough. Yes. It, it, there's more meat to it, let's say. It is. Yeah. Now, up next, we're going to be talking about some true stories that people have shared online. And the first one is by Wayne. 
He says, I live in Norwalk, Connecticut, and the cemetery behind Lockwood Matthews Mansion is haunted. I recently moved into the neighborhood and did not know the place quite well. Late October, oh, Halloween's spooky time too. <laughs> late October, coming home from work late, I asked a friend to show me the way home. We both walked toward Lockwood Matthews Mansion. It was very cold out, so we tried to find a shortcut home up to Bottle, Bottle Street. We quickly walked through the grounds of the mansion, climbed the stone wall, and went through the cemetery about 11 p.m. in the evening. Oh, that's not even, that's, that's night, man. We slowly walked along the walk. That was your first mistake. I mean, you don't go to the cemetery almost at midnight. Let me get a shortcut. Let midnight. me go shortcut <laughs> through a cemetery. No, thank you. A few minutes later, I heard a whistle. That will freak the heck out of me. I mean, whistling in the night, yeah, like, it's already that's literally, freaky, but we, a whistle in the cemetery? That, that usually, that kind of whistle is just means you're about to die. It's something like that. Mm. Even if it's not a ghost, it's somebody telling you. Somebody, yeah, like a killer. To like die. A killer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I asked my friend if he was whistling, and he said no. So we stopped and looked around, and we saw a British soldier with a hat and a uniform walking down the cemetery path. My friend something, said something to me, and I said, somebody must be playing a joke on us, basically. We walked a little farther, and the soldier just looked at us, and all of a sudden, it just evaporated in thin air. So just imagine, you're looking at that, and it just it disappeared. No, thank you. There was absolutely no breeze. We ran the lane on the path without stopping to the main gate and ran all the way home. Yeah, that, I would have done that the same. Later, I realized I had lost my eyeglasses and my work apron. My friends say I must have dropped them when we were running. The next day, we went back to the cemetery to see if I had led them there and they were neatly folded and placed on the tombstone in the center of the cemetery. I would have gone, I would have bought me a new pair of glasses and a new apron. Would it a have ghost been? touched it? Yeah. Well, probably, because it was all folded neatly in there. No, no, no. We heard was the it dry clean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we heard the same whistling <laughs> as the night before. To this day, we believe we saw the British sol uh, we saw a British soldier from the colonial era washing over the grounds. We have returned time and time again, but we have never seen it again. Mm. As we did research on the cemetery, we found out the British soldiers stood watch at night and kept their horses tied to the gate. So, so that's back to what I said in back in a couple of episodes where there's like a ripple effect of like it's like an energy of an action that was over and over repeated and it's kind of like stuck there or something yeah it's weird because it's not really like that soldier was trying to talk to them it wasn't trying to interact with them or anything he was just minding his own routine it probably but mm. he also said that the, he looked at them oh in he the did eye, look at he, he'd look at them and then he disappear oh wow so maybe he's he got aware distracted. he's aware he got of distracted. them in there. He's doing his routine and then he's like, wait a minute, what's this? And then boom. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's <all>. interrupting <laughs> me. But yeah, I like I say, I wouldn't go even if it's shorter. No. I would call an Uber probably. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Okay. The next story is by an unknown. They didn't leave their name. It says, My house is haunted and I know it for a fact. Even my friends saw things before me telling them about ghosts. For example, there is a lot of banging a few times a week. Banging? Yeah. Apparently they bang, bang, bang several times a week. On his what? Oh, he doesn't say. Okay. So um, anywhere. <laughs> Maybe it's Somewhere the pipes. Either. Maybe when they, you know, they all pipes, they, when you turn it on, they go. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. The most recurrent thing is misfitting reflections, like things being blocked out in the window reflection when there is nothing to block it out. Just today, I saw a body shape in a misfitting reflection, which is what drew me here. So that's what she 
wrote the story because she saw like a figure. Things get weirder. Every week or two, I might see a figure out of the corner of my eye. Every couple of months, I feel like I'm being touched. I can hear somebody talking to me. One time, it sounded like a female voice to say, Hey, you. And I added, How are you? <laughs> One time, my sister was watching TV, and the remote was all the way on the other couch. Suddenly, the I.O. TV stream on demand thing popped up. Also, one day I was watching TV in my bed and the volume kept going down. I keep turning it back on and I will turn around, lay back down on my bed and it will be going down again. Years ago, I saw an African-American woman exiting my bathroom and going into my sister's room. So this house has a little bit of everything so far. One time I woke up at around three or four in the morning to a whole conversation happening in my room. I do not remember any of it as I, as I was about four years old. I just remember being ready to scream. I mean, just imagine being four years old and listening to that. Like, I will be running to my mom's room. I see dead people. I see dead people, mom. Come and help me. <laughs> Here's the best one. I was home with my mom, who was upstairs, and I was alone in my basement, sitting on my computer, when I heard a voice saying, Hello? I ignored it. Until about a minute later, when it actually said my name. I wrapped up my basement stairs as fast as I could, and along the way, I turned my head to see a solid figure as clear as daylight. I can still describe him as this was, and this was years ago. I was shocked at first, so I didn't say anything to anyone. A few weeks later, I could not hold it anymore. Just imagine just having to hold that for a long time because you're scared to tell somebody. I blurted, out, I blurted it all out to my mom in a car ride to my brother's baseball game. She had never believed what I say, her, or fell. Um, like, and the not, none of that was real until then, when she almost started crying, saying that I perfectly have described her father, who died a few years before I was born. So she But he said an African-American lady. No, that was in uh, another day. But the, the last one when she was in the, in the basement, that she heard somebody say her name and she ran, mm. she saw a man. And she described them into her mom. And I'm just wondering what the, who the lady was. We, I don't know. That house, I don't know. Because she I says as an African-American, I assume she's not. So usually assuming. you're not going to describe somebody, something you're not. Yeah. They, they don't say it, but I agree with you. Yeah. So that means that there is an extra person there also. And she described her grandpa. Mm. This is so, so spooky. And I don't know. And I'm, I'm always curious how... Why, and I think we mentioned this before, why some of these ghosts look like a solid entity, but some of them is just like a, like a shape or a mist, but some of them look like if there was an actual person there. Mm. I don't know. Maybe your eyes fill it in, like your brain just fills in the, the body. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Or maybe that ghost is Stronger. has so much strength, like you say, that he's able to show that way. Mm, I don't know. <clears throat> Assuming there's ghosts. How would you rate this one? Yeah. Solid four. I mean, it's not that scary, so I'm kind of going by that too. The only thing that it really, it really moved me was the grandpa bar. Yeah. Okay. This also was uh, written by somebody who didn't leave the name. So it says, I have been researching my family history for some time now. And I think my long dead great great grandma came to see it if I if to see if I was doing everything right. Here is my experience. I was laying half asleep one night about five years ago. I had my eyes closed when I suddenly felt something, like a presence, standing in the doorway of my bedroom. I I I understand. Sometimes you feel like somebody's looking at you and all that. So she felt that. Mm -hmm. At first, I thought it was my mother, so I called out to her and asked her what she wanted. That's when I noticed that the figure looked nothing like my mother. It had a long dress on, styled somewhere in the 1860s, 
with its hair up in a bun. Out of nowhere, a quick flash of light illuminated its face. It's it a was, woman, right? So far. Because you say his. It's on, I, its I, face. Its face. Mm -hmm. Okay. She doesn't say if it's a man. It was the middle of winter, so it wasn't lightning, and there was no one else up. I cannot figure out to these days where the light came from. When the light flashed, the figure's face was lit up for a brief moment, and I noted it was an elderly woman with big bright eyes and grayish hair. I gasped. I pulled the covers over my head. I stayed this way for a long time until I gathered enough courage to peek out. peek a <laughs> The figure was gone. A few days later, I was researching the family history when I came across a photo that had been buried deep within a box. I pulled it out, I turned it over, and I nearly fell to the floor. It was the same lady I had seen that night. I know I'd never seen this picture before then. The picture had no writing to tell me who she was. So I took the picture to my great uncle, the family historian. That's when he told me that the photo was of his mother, taken shortly before she died. So my question is, did my great-great-grandma come back from the dead to look in on her sleepy descendant? I think so. And I don't think I was dreaming either. Wow. What do you think? I rate that one, yeah, four as well. Four as well? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not scary, but it's also, it's similar. It's not scary. I was, for me, there's like horror scary where you are freaked out and your heart is pounding and you just want to leave the room and spooky scary where you know something spooky, but it doesn't really terrify you, mm -hmm. but you know, it's like abnormal. Nothing crazy is happening. Yeah. So like I feel if that like happened to me, I wouldn't, I'd be okay. Like I wouldn't be traumatized by that. Yeah. I wouldn't want to move or anything probably. Yeah, I, I see that. You'd just that. be wondering in general because, you know, like, how stuff works. Well, You'd be thinking, how do ghosts work? What's going on here? Oh, what, what are they, are they trying, trying to, to tell me? Yeah. Yeah. So. so these are our urban legends from Connecticut and a little bit of spooky stories. We hope you liked it and we hope you keep coming back. If you have any spooky stories that you have experienced, please send it to us at yvonneplus1 at gmail.com. We would love to hear them and share them. And I that is my favorite thing ever, to hear people's stories. There's so many things happening in this world. Uh, also, if you like art and you like to draw, how do you think the glaucus look like? Make a, a drawing or a painting and send it to us and we can share it and compare them uh, at yvonneplus1 at gmail.com. And what, do you, what else do you want to say? Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, a comment on our videos. If there's anything that you want to see or any, any suggestions, we're definitely open and yeah. hope to see you in the next episode. We are so happy you are here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.